Understanding carrier mobility really requires understanding the effect of temperature on electron collisions. Mobility is a consequence of collisions. Conductivity is affected by collisions. And so we really need to know what makes electrons collide. And what do they collide with? Electrons collide with two things that really affect transport, carrier transport. One is the vibrational states of atoms in the lattice. And the second is ionized impurities, which have an electrostatic reach to them. So let's talk about them individually. Let's first talk about electron phonon scattering. That is the scattering of electrons off of the vibrations of atoms in the lattice. Think about a pinball machine. And the bumpers on a pinball machine have this ability, if you've ever noticed, to deliver a little impulse to the ball when it hits. And that's kind of what atoms in the lattice can do. They, they can do that, and that, that changes the direction of motion, which basically it changes the location of the uh, at electron in case space. At low temperature, it would, might stand to reason that electrons are, are slower. Not their drift speed, but their thermal velocity is slower. So they are, uh, and by the way, thermal velocity is much larger typically than drift speed. So they are colliding with phonons a lot less because they're just going slower. And so you have a longer relaxation time, and I'll call it tau sub pH, just to indicate that it's it's the relaxation time from phonon scattering, from scattering off of, of vibrations, and because we're going to talk about a second uh, mechanism later. Another thing that happens at low temperature is that those phonons quiet down. They basically start to turn off as you reduce temperature. And so in a, in a low temperature uh, material, low temperature semiconductor, you have fewer large amplitude vibrations. And so the chances of an electron being, being whacked by a vibrating atom is, is smaller. And so I have a little um, uh, animation that kind of demonstrates that. If we consider an electron here going through, say, first a cold semiconductor, where you have fewer phonon modes fired up, and then you consider what happens when the electron goes through a higher temperature semiconductor, where you have more uh, phonon modes fired up. The electron might zip past the phonons in the cold semiconductor, but it will hit a phonon in a higher temperature semiconductor just because it's more likely to. So I just watch it again. It misses the cold phonons, but it, it's less likely to miss the high temperature phonons. And so you know, I can do this all day, I suppose, but I think, I think that makes the point. And so there's a temperature dependence to the scattering relaxation time, which remember is, is you can just think of as the time between collisions for phonons. And it goes as one over the temperature to the three halves. And keep in mind, it's inversely proportional to a power of temperature. And so as you get higher, hotter and hotter, you get shorter and shorter phonon relaxation time. Now, mobility we established last time is proportional to the relaxation time. So if you decrease relaxation time, you decrease mobi mobility. If you increase relaxation time, you increase mobility. So mu for phonon scattering is also proportional to temperature to the minus three halves. The other mechanism that we need to consider is scattering off of dopants, which are ionized, assuming 100% ionization, so they're, they're all ions, meaning that when an electron goes past it, it doesn't have to even come into contact with it. It feels an electrostatic force diverting its direction. Uh, what happens as, as temperature changes? Well, first of all, as the temperature increases, the electron is moving faster because, again, the thermal velocity is larger than the drift velocity. So the, the electron is just moving faster at higher temperatures, and it can zip past that ion without noticing it. That helps, and that means at higher temperature, you're less likely to have Im impurity scattering. You would think it's going faster it's going to run into ions more often, and you'd have a shorter impurity scattering relaxation time. But it's actually the opposite, because at higher speed, uh, basically the scattering cross-section, what we, what we call it, the probability of scattering, goes down. Another thing to consider is that if you have more impurities, then you have more scattering centers. And so for sure, then, if you add impurities, you're going to reduce the scattering relaxation time. You're going to have more scattering events. But I think there's a little animation 
Okay, I didn't do a very good job on that curvature there, but uh, but you get the point. The, the electron, and I'll even do that one again. The electron feels that electrostatic force, and regardless of whether it's a donor or an acceptor ion, pretty much the same thing happens. The electron gets diverted in, in, its, in its course. And um, uh, so uh, we have a little expression there for the, the scattering relaxation time. It gets bigger as temperature gets bigger, meaning the mobility goes up with temperature, but the, the scattering relaxation time due to impurities gets uh, smaller if you increase the doping, meaning, and this is really important, mobility gets smaller as doping gets larger. Write that down. That's a, that's a principle you're going to keep referring back to. Mobility gets smaller as doping gets larger. Uh, N sub A is the number of acceptors, and N sub, that's supposed to be D. N sub D is the number of donors. That's, that's a typo. N sub D. Fix that right away. <laughs> N sub D. Okay, so there, this is also extremely important. That's why it wiggled. So there are two processes here, the scattering off of phonons and scattering off of impurities. Those are two different processes, and they have different temperature dependencies. That they, they clearly, the one, the process that has the um, shortest relaxation time wins, and that is the process that that has the the strongest effect on mobility. Whatever the process that reduces. Uh, mobility the most is the one that you will notice if you did a measurement if I measured mobility and the me measurement I will make is that due to the process that has the shortest relaxation time all right so th they combine then and this is how they combine and it is Matisse's rule the term I don't think appears in our textbook but that's what it is and they appear that they, they add an inverse uh, so I have a certain relaxation time due to phonon scattering, a certain relaxation time due to impurity scattering, and the one-overs of those relaxation times add. And since mu, mobility, is is proportional to relaxation time, the same rule applies to mobility. And that's actually what's going to be really important here for us, that one over the mobility is one over the mobility due to phonon scattering plus one over the mobility due to impurity scattering. Just a few um, uh, other other details. I just wanted to, to consequences. I wanted to, to show you then. One, one is, let me get this word in front of you. It comes up in a later chapter, ballistic transport. And that is when basically, yeah, the electrons move so fast that scattering does not contribute to the conductivity. And that that's usually the case when you have a very high voltage moving electrons through a very thin distance, a very short distance. Uh, so across a very thin film, across the channel. When that's the case, the mean free path is much larger than the actual size of the device. And, that, and so that's ballistic transport, and we will, we will see it later. Um, but I just wanted, I thought this was a good, appropriate time to, to get you to first hear that word and have some sense of what it means. Uh, and then another term that's coming up uh, also soon is, is, is velocity saturation. Even if you increase the electric field, you cannot increase the electron speed indefinitely, right? Uh, the speed does, the terminal velocity does increase as the electric field increases. But there's a limit to that. And, and it's not special relativity. It's, it's way before that. Uh, the, for the fastest electrons typically are seen moving inside of a semiconductor is about, about 100,000 meters per second. And that's because... Uh, electrons start to scatter off of higher energy phonons and when they have higher energy. And the electron's kinetic energy gets high enough that it starts to, to meet up with uh, the next phonon mode, which is referred to as an optical phonon, the very high energy uh, phonons. Uh, the the lower, lower energy phonons that, that are responsible for, uh, typically responsible for scattering are called acoustic phonons. But when, it, when the electron hits, a, hits an optical phonon, it um, uh, can scatter. Uh, again, so so uh, that that sets pretty much sets a speed limit for electrons inside of a, a semiconductor, and it's about a hundred thousand meters per second. Okay, so let's uh, let me stop it with with that, and you know we'll talk about current density uh, next.